Hey friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today I'm going to show you how to play the Billy String song, Enough to Leave. This is one that a lot of you have written in asking for, and uh, the second I listened to it, it really caught my ear, and I sort of heartfelt uh, lament and, and missing of some friends that he lost. But um, this is a great song. I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with this song, and also to do some of the licks and fills that sound just like Billy String. So my PDF that I made, playsongnotes.com gives you everything you need to know. The first page is all the lyrics from start to finish, as well as the chord shapes, you know, cheat sheet and everything. Page two will be the, the chord shapes. I'll look at the chord progressions, and I'll also show you a bunch of strumming uh, tips for this song. A basic strum, the full Billy string strum, and then a general tip about how to manage some of those difficult chord changes while strumming. So stick around for that. And finally on page three, I have some licks and fills that I've tabbed out for you. And I'll say about the licks and fills, I've sort of tabbed out uh, slightly simplified versions because Billy Strings is a wizard. He is a he's a god, and I am a mere mortal. So I'm sort of showing you, you know, 80% slightly rounded corner versions of what he's playing. It's a great way to sound mostly like him, but not have to be as good as him to do it. So uh, stick around. I'm going to do a full playthrough at the end of the song. So I have timestamps here. Jump ahead if you know what you're looking for. Skip the parts you don't like and get that PDF over at my website, playsongnotes.com. But with that said, let's get into this lesson and learn Enough to Leave by Billy Strings. All right, first up, let's look at the chords in this song. So we're going to be in the key of G here. And these are all the common chords you're going to see in that key. So first we'll have a G chord. I typically play this with my ring finger on the third fret. That's what Billy does. I think it sounds better with his uh, vocal melody. However, sometimes I'll switch to the G and play it like this uh, in the times when there's a fast switch involved. So G chord, pick your, pick your voicing. Any G chord will work, right? You'll also need a B minor chord. This is uh, the trickiest chord in the song because it's a bar chord. And you use it quite a bit, so you need to have a, a solid grasp on your B minor. I have a couple separate videos on that on that chord. You'll need an E minor, you'll need a C, you'll need a D, and you'll need an A minor. Okay, mostly open chords here. For the D, you do want to get used to or familiar with taking off your middle finger uh, and playing that D sus too. You're going to hear Billy do that a lot, right? Okay, so uh, those are the chord shapes we're gonna need. Now let's look at the chord progression, right? This is the order that all the chords are going to be played in this song. Now the good part is there's only two different sections. There's the verse and then there's the chorus. Each of them have eight measures total. And in each of these, you're going to repeat the eight measures and play the, play the eight measures twice and then move on to the next thing. So nice and, nice and standard here, nothing too crazy going on. So let's not worry about strumming yet. Aside from, let's just do a single strum on the one count of each measure, okay? So if we were to do the verse, you know, it'd be G, two, three, four, B minor, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four, stay on E minor, then go to C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, D, two, three. Then you repeat it, right? Enough to leave you, enough to la di da Then to G, then like a hard wind coming down. Okay, simplest way to get started with any song, this one included, is just do the strum on the when the chord change happens. Don't worry about a pattern yet. This lets you get used to the chord shapes and the chord, uh, the chord, chord switches and the the progression itself. Getting a sense for what are the um, what are the order you move through the chords on. Uh, so before I move on to the chorus, you'll note that I have some some like little markings here for when there are riffs. I'm going to show you the riffs later in the lesson, but I just called these out because those are the measures when the riffs happen. If you want to do the riffs, so you can ignore those um, if you're not interested in the riffs. But that's basically uh, what the verse chord progression looks like, and then the chorus is going to be D two three four B minor two three four D two three four G two. Four A minor, three, four, D, two, three, four, A minor, four, D, two. Then repeat it, right? What am I supposed to do with my afternoons? What did I say to me to make me change my mind again? Okay, and after the chorus, when you play that progression twice, you're always going to go back to the verse. Uh, but in the song, what he'll do is he'll do the verse progression after each chorus, but with no singing. It's like a solo, right? And I have that in my in my first page of my PDF. Um, after the first chorus and after the second chorus, he goes to a uh, instrumental verse and does a solo. So those are the two progressions you'll need for the song. Now let's talk about strumming patterns, right? How can we take those progressions and, and amp them up a little bit? 
So the simplest strum I would recommend to start with would be doing a down strum on the one and the three counts, right? So if you want to play with Billy, put your metronome on around, uh, it's like 147 beats per minute. I'll go a little bit slower for now, but if we just did a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're just doing down strums, all right? This is a good way to start. Uh, the verse would sound like this, right? So, enough to kill you, enough to put you down. Seems like everywhere you turn is like a hard wind coming down. Right? Let me count it now. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay? So that's this very simplest way to do it. Again, it's a good way to get started with things. Now, the strumming pattern that Billy uses is basically a down. Down, down, up, down. Down, down, up, down. Down, down, up, down. Right? On the counts, it would be one, two, three, four, and 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 one. And it's important, if you can, to keep that steady tempo, even if you have to go slower. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. Um, to doing it slow, nothing wrong with that, right? Get comfortable, then then crank up the speed. So if we were to go through the verse uh, progression with that strumming pattern, it would be a down, 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 and to the C, to the G, to the D. Now, I'll say on those D measures, he will commonly do like a, some free strumming where he's deviating from the pattern a little bit. I just want to call that out because that's going to happen from time to time in a lot of songs, especially with Billy's stuff. It's, it's just such an organic feel to it. So it's okay if you deviate a little bit, but the main pattern is down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. Okay. So now that you have that, I want to talk about an advanced strumming tip here. And this is actually one that simplifies things. So it might seem advanced because it's not necessarily obvious if you're just starting with guitar. But this is a definite like uh, trick or technique or a hack or whatever you want to call it, which makes it easier for you to switch chords. So check this out. This might look kind of crazy. And, but what's going on here is when we do our strumming pattern, down, 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 up, down 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 up down what's going to happen and if you watch billy's live versions you can sort of see him doing this is he's going to move his left can off the chord shape on the four and the four end count or maybe just the four end count but it's going to look like this So what's going on there is we're taking our left hand off of the chord shape and starting the transition to the next chord while our strumming is happening. So what this lets you do is it buys you extra time. Because if you were to keep your left hand, say, on the G, down, 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 up, you'd have to get to that B minor really quickly. You'd have like less than the eighth note. And it, it's just, it, it's super hard to do. It's, you can, it can sound muffled, right? But instead what we can do is down, down, switch, down, down, switch, down, 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 switch, down, down, switch, down, down, switch. And what's happening is my right hand is keeping the strumming going. Right? And on those switches, I literally have no hand on the guitar, right? Right? And that's okay. You're strumming some open strings. So you don't want to like amplify or crank up the volume too much on those those strums, those empty strums, so to speak. But this is something that it's okay to do. And if you look at the little tab I included here, I, I show it, right? A down, down, empty, down, down, empty, down, 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 down empty, down, down, empty, down, right? Now, once you get comfortable with this, you can stay on the chord, the first chord, 
as long as you want, and then maybe you can cut it a little bit closer. For example, maybe you only start the switch on the final four and count. So this time I'm going to do it as I normally would and just watch my left hand. It's going to sort of start the change a little bit early every time. Back to the G. Okay, so I'll say with the B minor, that's the trickiest chord in this song. It's the hardest one to switch to. So that's the one where you're really gonna, have, going from that G to that B minor, and that B minor to the E, that's where you really are gonna wanna use this technique. But I wanted to share this here because I don't want you to think that you have to stay on the G for every down, 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 up, switch to B minor, down, 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 up, switch to E, down, down, right? That would just be, uh, that's asking a lot of yourself. Be more, It's okay to do that. Those empty strums in the key of G are typically not gonna sound terrible. So uh, that's a little trick I wanted to share with you. And then finally, let's look at some of these runs and fills, okay? So these are things you can use in the intro and in the verse to sound like Billy Strings. Now, but let me say this, right? I'll say this, I said this earlier, I'll say it again. I can't play as good as Billy Strings. So these are gonna be simplified versions of the riffs he's doing. If you want the exact versions he's doing, check out Lessons with Marcel. He's an awesome YouTube teacher. Um, he has serious bluegrass guitar chops and that's what you need to teach this sort of stuff. I can't play like that. So I hear Billy play it. I wanna play like he does, but I can't. So I just simplify it to capture the spirit of it. So that's what these runs and fills are gonna be. A bit more beginner friendly versions of Billy Strings runs and fills. So for the intro to this song, um, it's gonna start off with a raked E minor and a raked strum is where basically instead of doing a normal strum that's like kind of one motion and kind of gets most of the strings at once, a raked strum is going to be where you're kind of going to go slow but steady, right? Um, in this case, we're going to do a raked strum starting on the thinnest string. So we're going to end with this bass note, okay? So that's what you hear at the beginning of the song. Um, now, this is eight measures of E minor total. There's a lot of just free strumming where he's just kind of, you know... Right? I'm not gonna tab that out. You can kind of do that yourself. Just you know, do light strumming, whatever you wanna do. The other riff he does here is this. Those are the notes he's playing. In the actual version, he's doing it. Something like that. He's doing it like twice almost. But basically what's gonna happen here is I play my E minor with my middle finger on the fifth string. When you get ready for this riff, you just wanna go up to the first fret of the fifth string and slide from first to second, right? Then go to open, fifth, fourth string, back to fifth string, second fret, let go of the fifth string, ring finger on the third fret, the low E string, and then get back to your E bass note, okay? Now you might notice you can do some hammer-ons and pull-offs In, in in place of picking. Meaning, if you're good with hammer-ons and you're good with pull-offs, you can play the exact notes I have here and you don't have to pluck the strings every time. Your fingers can kind of do it. But if you want to pluck them all, okay, that's basically the run. You can do any rhythm you want. And then the final part of this intro is going to be Okay, you're gonna build up some strums. Down, 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 up. I do all down strums, but at the very end, I'll do a down, up. Down, 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 up. And after the down, up, I'm gonna bring my hand into the strings like this. It's gonna kill the sound. I have that represented with some X's in my tab. Then you go to the G. Enough to leave you, or enough to kill you, right? So the whole intro, as I would play it, would be Enough to kill you, enough to put you down. Okay, that's basically gonna be it. Again, it's eight measures total, so you're gonna count to four, eight times, start with that rake D minor, and you start counting when you're 
the final note of the rake strum happens. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, And then don't muffle that G like I did. Make it nice and clear. So that's how you do the intro, okay? Now in the um, the verse, we open up with a G to B minor to E minor. And we're gonna be on E minor for two measures. And in the second measure of E minor, you can do a little run, a little riff, a little fill. The simplest one that Billy does is put his pinky down on this third fret of the second string, and then he plays the open high E string. And in context of strumming, that's gonna sound like this. Okay, down. time. Right? Down, down, down. Up. Okay? Whether you want to do the single notes and then go back to the strumming, or if you want to incorporate it into your strumming, what I'll do is I'll do a down strum, which includes the third fret. And then my next up strum will just get the thinnest string, right? So. Okay, so listen along to the song, you can hear him do that. Um, and then the second version of that same fill is gonna be like this. So come in, be coming on the E minor, and then we're gonna be our, have our left pinky on that same starting note, but we're gonna slide it from third to fifth fret. But the first pluck we do, it's gonna be the third fret and the open thinnest string. And then we're gonna play it, play those two notes, and then slide your pinky up after you play it. If you do it right, this note and this note are the same. So it kind of starts a little bit dissonant. This would be dissonant. And you kind of have that a nice slide effect. Okay, and then. C. I'm just using my middle finger on the second fret notes. So. Seems like every way you turn, there's a hard wind coming down. Okay? So that full, in, uh, that full first line of the verse would be G to B minor, then to E. Then go to the C. Now, when you're on the D, that's the riff I'm gonna show you here, the last one. You're basically starting on a D, and you wanna end up on a G. So what you're gonna do is do this little walk up. Second, third, fourth frets on the fifth string to open second, fourth on the fourth string, and then you end with a G strum, okay? So basically, um, the way I have it marked out here in my tab is you're gonna, I have it as three little tag teams there, right? Three duos of notes. That might help you with the timing. Um, so basically... So if you're gonna be on D for two measures, what I do is I do a down, 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 up, down. And then the riff. So in the second measure of the D that you're gonna do, you're only doing the first down strum. And then go to the G. Okay, so the two measures of the D would be like this. Down, 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 up, down. Okay, so that's what that riff sounds like. Let me do the uh, first two lines of the verse. And you can do this every time you're playing the verse. Um, enough to kill you, enough to put you down. Seems like every way you turn is like a hard wind coming down. Messed up. <laughs> Let me do it again. The beer, so enough to leave me, enough to leave me here. Let's do the other E minor. Right? And though the room is empty now, I can almost feel you here. Now at the end of the verse, you don't do the fill because you want to stay on the D. What am I supposed to do? 
my afternoons, okay? So that's how you do the fills there, and uh, and hopefully those are going to be helpful for you. So that's what you'll need for this song. Um, hey, uh, I'll do a playthrough next, and I'll end the lesson there, but let me just say one more time, get this PDF if you want on my website. I spent a lot of time making this for you. I love this song. I put that love into this PDF. It's three different pages. Lots of good stuff, giving you the tabs you need. I use this myself, so this is made with care. I've gone back to request, fixed a few errors already, and uh, it's available for you at my website, playsongnotes.com. But let me do a quick playthrough here, beginning to end, and you'll see what this whole song sounds like. So Enough to Leave by Billy Strings. Check him out. He is a fantastic artist, and I'll see you all around. Take care. Bye-bye. Let's see.